Well, girls, uh, welcome, welcome. It's Friday already. I, I think I'm more excited. I say this. I am more excited about this week than I've been about any week because this is a new tour cycle. Like, yeah. right? It's brand new. It's the first one. And so okay. there's always the, you know, it, there's always a rule of firsts. The first one is going to be super important because everything else that happens after this, it's referred back to the rule of firsts. So it's somewhere in there. If yeah. you dig, if you dig, it's going to be somewhere and you're going to find it in your rule of firsts. So uh, we've, we've talked about that. We've, we've, we've gone over that. We are live on Facebook. I want to say hi to everybody on Facebook. Linda is over there uh, chatting with you so we Thank can kind of focus over here. Please, if you're watching on the replay, leave comments like you're watching live, okay? Yeah. Because we do get to go back in and we will chat with you. It might not be during Shabbat because we're focused because I'm going to be like watching everybody's videos. But it might, it'll, we will get to you. We want you to know you're just as important as if you were sitting here in our living room. For many of Absolutely. you, you're brand new because you came off the summit and you're like, what the heck are you guys doing? This is fun. I didn't even know this was here. <laughs> I just want to say that this all started around a table Lisa, you're one of the OGs sitting around the table in my house in, um, in uh, San Diego, and we were all sitting around, and we finished up a study, um, as many of you might hear from, me, from the summit. I was struggling going back and forth between church and Torah. This is a 20-year bounce. Like I was like, I missed my friends. I missed the familiarity of what happened at church. Is there anybody else who feels that way? Tell me comments, reply. I want to see, I want to come back and look later and say, I felt that way. I felt that way. I want to know because it's nice to not be alone. But I was bouncing back and forth. And I was really struggling. So at that season, I was attending a Christian church, non-denominational, fabulous church, trusting the potter, what he was doing in my life at that season. And I met the most amazing women who, I'm going to start crying now, who still are some of my very best friends close, close, close to me. I was sitting around my kitchen table. We were doing a um, home group that the church had provided. Like it, you all volunteered to do a home group, home study. And I had sworn after being a woman's pastor for years that I was never going to be in leadership in church again because I hated what church was doing. I love it when people say never. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like the people who say I'm never getting married again. You cannot talk about the church like it's your ex-husband, ladies. Okay, everybody put that down in your rules. We're going to talk about a lot of, a lot of you oldies here who've been here over this last year, you're going to be like, yeah, oh my gosh, she's saying it again. But just so you know, we don't bash even the, that's how the potter chose to bring us to this point right now, right? We have to trust that process and we, it, it's all good. Even if it felt bad, it was good because it taught you what not to do. It taught you yeah. what not to be, or there was, you met friends or you made connections. There was a reason for that season. So these ladies are sitting around my table and it was so amazing. And we went through this like really great, like little thing that was, they put together for us. And then when it was done, we're like, well, it was called life. It was a life group. Well, where's, we need life after life. Like, what are we going to do now? And I said, well, sheepishly, would you guys be interested in maybe doing a Taurus study for a, a cycle for a year? Because it's about to come up. And would you guys be interested in maybe doing this? And they're like, what is that? And you know, Lisa's like, yes, yes. Everyone's like, yes, yes. Let's go deeper. We want to go deeper. So that's what we did for a year. And it was so great. And we would zoom Brenda in. We would put my little laptop, you know, sit it like she was sitting in a chair, like at the table. And so, I got my own chair. <laughs> yeah. So she was like zooming in from Texas and we were in San Diego and then everybody kind of dispersed and moved and life happened. And then we all came back last year and said, let's do it again. And that's, you're here. This is our second year back after that original group, our second year back into this cycle um, and now we have women from literally all over the planet. I ask uh, in the group what continent you live on. And it was so fun. Petra's joining us right now from South Africa. We have women coming in here from England. I mean, it is fun. We've got Europe. We have South America. We have Canada. We have fun, fun. Of course, all of our U.S. girls. But just thank you. Thank you for what a great year it has been. Because the heart of this is that you can sit around and be in a place where you feel safe that you might not pronounce it right. That's why I'm here. Cause I get to be like Deborah said, I get to Fisher price everything for you. I get, you may not pronounce it right. Um, you may not say it right. You, you have permission to just walk this out wherever you're at. And we're not going to, well, we might laugh at you, but we will laugh with you. How about that? We might laugh and be like, okay, this is how you say it, girl. I used to say it like that too. Uh, you can say, I don't know how to do this and no one's going to, 
correct you in a hateful, unloving way. We celebrate what we all agree on. We're not going to argue about what we disagree on. We might direct you to a person to go chat with to maybe help you walk that out. Um, but I just want you to feel safe here. Right, Brenda? Do you have anything yes. to add to that? No, you said it. You said it beautifully. This is truly a, a gathering place where we we want to walk out, model, practice, and encourage all of you to be doing the same thing. Love. You know, we really want to. We really want to embrace one another. And it's so okay that we have differences. And it's so okay that we're at different. We're in different places. And it's so okay we have. We have women that are married, women that are unmarried. We have mommies, we have grandmothers, we have single women, we have widows, we have um, never been married, we have hoping to be married, we have everything here. The neat thing is that every single one of us here, no matter where we're living or who we are or what our position is or whatever, we're all Isha's. And if you were at the summit, you heard me talk about Isha's. It's one of my passions because Isha means woman. And it is a woman of any age, a woman of any station, a woman. It is a woman. And that's what we all have in common. And, um, and the strength that comes with that, the reflecting of the glory of God, that is what Isha is. It is, it is us reflecting the glory of God and allowing him to shine, not us, but allowing him to shine and reflecting his glory and modeling ourselves after him, after his attributes, after his characteristics, um, I guess is a good way to put it. And, and that's what we all have in common. And all of the minutia stuff, all the other little things, they're not worth the argument. We're not going to go there because it, it, it's everybody's walking in revelation. We all see dimly through a glass right now. We're all enjoying being together. And each one of us is so unique and so beautiful and so precious. And we get to learn from each and every one. And that's where we, where we want to be. And that's kind of our heart here. So um, just know that we honor you, every one of you, no matter where or what uh, whether you don't understand what Torah is, whether you've been walking in Torah for 35, 40 years, it doesn't matter. We are just delighted to have you here and we want to honor you uh, right where you're at. And we want to model that in our behavior, in our conversations, um, one with another, so that it'll release into our homes and it'll be uh, an opportunity for the Holy One to uh, rain out his shalom on everyone that's in our home, in our household, in our neighborhood, in our communities. That's, that's how we want to do it. This is how we do it. This is, this how, is how we do it. Mm, mm. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So more baselines. Let's get some more baselines. Yes, you have to love us. Major baseline. For everyone. <laughs> and it's okay New if you're year. like, you guys offend me. You're not for me. We love you. Any we love you. We love you anyway. It's all good. We love you. And, I'm, and, and that's all I'll say about that. Baselines. <laughs> some more baselines. We want to get everybody on the same page here. One of the things we, you know, you might hear what I'm saying. We're not bashing everything, even though my correction to my, from the Holy One recently is how I bash King James Version. So I'm not doing it this year. Girls, I'm not bashing the King James Version because bless his heart, he was operating in the South. Thankful. That's not a good thing. I'll take that back to also. Uh, <laughs> when you say bless his heart, that's not usually good. He was operating out of a place. He was using a filter of what he knew. You know, and when you know better, you do better. That's all. He was operating out of a place of what he knew. He was operating from a filter of his own um, his own rulership styles. So he was operating yeah, yeah. from those from that from that position. So so when the the when the Torah was being translated, the letters, everything were being translated, it was coming through the filter of his leadership style. So it doesn't hurt you to go back and kind of check what kind of man this was. And you understand that he didn't have certain revelations. He didn't have a revelations of love and servant leadership. He wasn't a servant leader at that. You know, that's not who he was. He yeah, showed he us is. who not to be. So yeah. it's a good thing. He is a good thing. He showed us not what not to do. He was, he was a dictator. He was, he couldn't. So when we read things in the King James that are come across to us as 
angry and hateful and the word cursed, which we're going to talk about again, ladies, the word cursed, when he's talking about those things, he's coming from that position because he, it's translating through, through him, okay? So when that happens, you're losing something in the translation. So when you come across something, you'll hear say this all the time, that feels not very loving, go in and research it. Dig in, dig deep, and go find out what it really meant, what the real translation was, what was really happening at the time. Ask the question. Seek, seek counsel on it. Don't just go, well, that's just what it says. Go in and find out. Study it out, ladies. Study it out because more likely than not, it, it may not be a positive, but mercy and judgment, sometimes there was a consequence to things, and, and, but you want to have a full understanding it, that it probably was misrepresented through the filter of King James. And so I hope that makes sense. Brenda, anything else to add to King James? Yeah. Um, we always lose things in translation. You know, those of us who don't have English as a first language maybe here, um, you always lose some things in, in translation and that's, and, and that's what occurs, which is why uh, we love that the Holy One causes his word to be alive and living in us and it, and it causes our, our DNA to vibrate. And, and it causes us to want to dig deeper to find out what's what's happening and what was uh, what was behind the scenes of it all. That's good. Because we really want to be hearing from from him. And um, in the translations, a lot of times we have to understand too that, I mean, thank God for King James, because he put the Bible in the hands of the common people. <laughs> it wasn't available, right? Uh, thank and you. So, you know what? Thanks. It was <laughs> hallelujah. And the good thing is, too, that um, uh, it made it available for, for all of us. I mean, we're reaping the benefit. So I love what Char I love what you said, Charlie. You know, we don't need to be bashing him. There's no reason to, but just but just check because you you always will lose things in translation. Um, and we've been through this before, but it's worth repeating again. Like the word off, the word off is anger in Hebrew, and in uh, in he I'm sorry in Hebrew the word off it's translated in English as anger, but in Hebrew it is the nostrils. It's the nose. It's the place where you blow the breath. So when it says in English, angry, we tend to think of anger in our present day, 21st century mentality. Uh, that's not how it was written. So it's things like that. You know, it's the blowing of the breath. It's either the giving of life or it's the warning like a bull blowing the, his um, heated air through his nose in a warning it's, it's that. Um, it doesn't mean that, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean the picture or image that we attribute to it from modern day verbiage. And so, Charlie, thank you for, for saying that. It's always, no, that's perfect. That is always worth digging into. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. It's perfect because we had a great example this week and we're going to hop into and 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 we may be 101 101ing it for a lot of you that have been here for a while, but we do have new ones. So I promise we'll give you some meat before you hang up. The, <laughs> the, um, the other thing we talk about is idioms. I mean, right now, if you're a Rudicaf fame member in, in our paid membership, we're, we're about ready to launch a, a idiom course, which I'm literally, when I just said it right now, I just got like excited chills. It's bumpy. So much fun. So there are idioms, like all through the word, there is idioms. And so, I mean, think about your life. I'm going to ruin it because it's ruined it for me. I'll ruin it for you because I don't want to be alone. You're going to go through your life now thinking of what's an idiom happening. Yeah, right, Missy? What am I saying that's an idiom? You're going to find out most of your verbiage is an idiom. And an idiom is like a, a colloquialism, a saying, something that is, uh, you, you know, it's a, a, like a parable in a few words, right? You're, you're yeah. rounding some things up. You've heard me say, my mother will say uh, to, uh, we're going to put on the dog when a uh, company was coming over because it meant to bring, and I did, she didn't have to say one more word. I would run around and grab the good towels. I'd switch the towels out, pull out the good dishes. I knew what to do when she said, okay, so-and-so is coming over. We need to put on <clears> the dog. <throat> it did not mean to go get the dog, skin it, get it ready for the barbecue. That is not what that meant. But if somebody from another country or from another time or another place, and they heard my mom right. say that, they would be freaking out, you know, unless they were from a country where that was, I guess, okay to eat the dog. But I digress. So you have 
so many idioms that we go through our life. I challenge you, literally, I've been writing down all the idioms that I say when they come out and it's cracking me up how many that I use. But there are so many idioms in the word. We had an incident during the summit with one of the ladies from South Africa uh, ask the question, she goes, I don't understand what you're saying because one of the speakers, Deborah Flanagan, who, oh my goodness, uh, I've been quoting her now like every day. Uh, she made a, she was talking about God getting all up inside your pudding like getting in your pudding, putting his fingers in your pudding. She kept saying, oh, he's he's like, he gets your fingers in your pudding. <laughs> and, and it was like, this lady was like, I don't understand what that means because it was an idiom. So she didn't yeah. understand what it meant. So we had to explain like what getting all up in your business was putting his fingers in your pudding. So and it's a Southern imagine? idiom. So that's a, on top of that. Oh, <laughs> on top of it, it's a Southern. <laughs> yeah. Help us Lord. So <laughs> I'm telling you, this is really cool because when you find out what idioms are and you find out if something is funny and it doesn't make sense to you, go find out. Is that an idiom? And it's something I may not just understand, you know, it, it and right. you'd be surprised how right. many idioms, because in that, in that culture, in that language, they spoke in parables, they spoke right. in idioms so that they didn't have to tell a big giant story. They would just say the idiom and everybody understood it. So there's a lot of what we talk about and that we'll go through this next cycle. We're going to try to pull those idioms out and say, this is an idiom. This is why we don't understand, or this is why we may have misunderstood this, or by why King James and his interpreters misunderstood it. It's because they didn't understand the idiom. It wasn't they were an idiot. It was an idiom. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like raining cats and dogs is one we like to use. It's raining cats and dogs. Right. Um, English speakers understand that it's raining cats and dogs just means that it's a heavy rain. Right. But you try to translate that word for word somewhere and you're going to come up with a whole new religion. <laughs> wait, right? wait a minute. That's what's happened. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened. We have to, yeah. We've made all these religions out of poor translations. And it does. I don't want that to scare you to think, no. oh, my goodness, because guess what? His word is alive. He doesn't and even living. need it. He does not oh, read, need it written. He doesn't need it written on which translation is right. I get, oh, sorry. I have a green screen. So which translation is right? Most people don't uh, ask that question all the time. Yes. Is this one right? Is this one right? Yes. The answer is yes. Read all of them because use all of them. And you'll find one that you maybe like on a daily basis, but I recommend using all of them because, because the way that the word is written, it is a verb driven language. It is dimensional. It is moving. It's a hieroglyphic. Most of the, the words make pictures. So you need to read multiple maybe uh, translations if you're not going to dig into the Hebrew so that you can actually see the picture of what that was trying to say better for right. you. That makes sense. I want to hear. Yes. Yes. Also write, what's your favorite mm -hmm. translation? Put them in, put it down in there for us. Let us know. Uh, one of the giveaways is actually a tree of life version. That's going to be given away this afternoon. Oh. They were given away. Yeah. Woot, woot. One of the things that's misunderstood all the time, and we're going to get into it today. So I really want to set a baseline before we move on for this next year is blessings and cursings. You probably have heard it before. It is worth repeating. Brenda, ready, set, go. Oh, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, um, first of all, just want to tell you guys, I'm having problems with my internet. It's been going off and on all day. So if I disappear for a little bit, I'll, I'll grab my phone and I'll, and I'll come back on. But um, blessing and cursings. Wow, this is a really good one. So the word um, for bless is Baruch. And it is um, for you geekies out there, H1288. And um, that's where you're going to look it up. It's a Strong's number and it'll coordinate to your uh, Hebrew lexicon, okay? And it means, you know, when we say we're going to bless somebody, we're thinking we're going to, you know, give them something or <laughs> give them money or something. I don't know. You're going to bless, bless them. You're gonna, oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're going to bless them. You're going to give them something. The word actually, um, uh, it comes from Genesis 122, guys. So listen to this. This is so cool. The word bless actually means in Hebrew to bend the knee, to kneel. It's, it's think of it like um, in the movies when we saw the King Arthur with his sword out and his, and his um, soldier guys would come, uh, uh, the knights would come and they'd bend their knee before the king and they'd bow, they'd bow their head. And that's the image. It's, it's bending your knee and bowing your head and putting yourself before the Holy One. And knowing that he is everything, 
knowing that he is our all in all. And the word bless means actually means to bend your knee. Okay, so it means to, to bend. Well, well, how do we get blessing out of that? Well, if you go to the first usage of the word, which is one of our, uh, one of our you know, main, main things, a methodology of study, one of the number one things that you have to do when you take those crazy classes, that you, t- <laughs> you take those crazy classes, uh, the first thing is that you find out where the first usage of the word is, because then it, like Charlie said earlier, like this is the first Parsha, it explains everything. So the very first usage is Genesis 122, and it's, it's, it's our scripture for today. It's part of our Parsha today, and it's talking about the multiplication. He said, be fruitful and multiply. He's talking about blessing the Holy One, blessing us in, in an expansion, in a broadening, in a, in a, a release of uh, confinement. It is an opening up and a releasing into. And the, so when you hear the word bless, when it's, when you're talking about the word bless as if you're going to be blessed by God, remember that it's an expansion. It's a, it's a, a movement. Everything in Hebrew is a movement. Everything is an action. It's not a noun based language. It's not static. Um, we get stuck in our minds, especially in the Western world, we get stuck in our minds because everything in our language is noun-based. Everything is about the noun. What's the noun doing? And in Hebrew, it's all about the verb. It's about what's happening. Yes, <laughs> it's about yes. the action. It's about the, so it, that's why it's not about who you are, stop, you know, form together. It's about who you are in the sense of how you function. How are you moving? How are you, how are you coming through? So the word bless is pouring out upon us this expansion. It is a pouring into and an expanding because it's talking about the multiplication. Mm. And uh, there's, there are other words that are used for the word bless. And one of them, I can't even think of it off the top of my head. I apologize. My internet was out, so I couldn't, I couldn't really uh, grab any study tools before um, we came on. But um, one of the other words, and I'll think of it in a minute, uh, it's about when you're blessing somebody else. And it's really got the same type of a, of a feeling toward it. It's the feeling of blessing and expanding and, um, and pouring into. So that is um, one of the things about blessed. And, um, and uh, always go back to the first usage. And it's, like I said, it's in the Garden of Eden. It's God. <laughs> It's God releasing our our destinies to us. What what are we here for? Ah, to be fruitful and to multiply, and to have dominion, and to have community, and to be part of one another. And so it's a it's a it's an expansion. In in the same vein, to curse we think of like you know when you put a. <laughs> I hate to say it this way, but I'm in a mood, okay? Like a, you know, like a witch's curse on somebody, you know? Right, like you, right. You grab an eye of newt and you start crushing it up, you know? He says that to me one more time and then, you six know, you spiders, wanna, six, six spiders, spiders and, a, and a snake Spider tail. legs and yeah. And you're throwing it in and you're stirring it up. Okay, that's not, that's not what that is. So curse, um, on the other hand, is from Genesis 8.21. And it's, it's, it's the Holy One saying that he will never again curse the land and flood it. And he's saying he's never again going to restrict. He's never again going to restrict the land. Now he's talking specifically in this, in this scripture about with water, he's not going to flood the earth again and destroy the earth again with, with the water. But the word cursing is, is causing in our mind's eye, it's causing a story to unfold. And the story is being that of restricting and limiting of putting down, like what happened with the serpent in the garden, when the Holy One said to him, you know, no longer are you going to be walking on your feet, you're going to be down, you're going to be eating dust. So what, that's where we're getting the image of curse from. What happened was he was restricted and limited. He was brought down lower. And instead of being up here 
and having the freedom, he was restricted and brought down and he was reduced. And that's really the essence of what the word curse means when you pull it apart um, in the Hebraic. Uh, that's what it's talking about. It's about reducing, restricting, limiting, putting down. So when we are doing that with other people, we might not have the word curse in our mind. We, not, we might not have that verbiage in our thinking and in our thoughts. But when we're speaking to somebody and we speak disrespectfully to them, when we limit who they are, when we're reducing their value and who the Holy One says they are okay we are bringing about a curse on them and that's why life and death is in the tongue we have the opportunity to speak life to someone to speak blessing to someone to speak a release from restrictions a release from bondage a release from being confined and being restricted that's blessing or we can limit restrict reduce bring down low can you can, this is so good because the, for now what i realize whenever i hear the word curse i just i just see limit i mean curse or yes. rest, restrict or yes. limit that's the, yes. the, the in yeah. my brain i do the quick translation yes we do it with our eyes ladies with our looks with our eye rolls we curse people with our eye rolls yeah. with our <laughs> thoughts Je yeshua said that you will do it even with your thoughts even if yes. you think it you're yes. restricting them because you're restricting them in your own ability to bless yeah. them. Yeah. And when you're and thinking yes. it in your head and yes. you're like secretly eye rolling or not so mm -hmm. secretly, if you're me, not so secretly <laughs> eye rolling, then you are restricting who you can be to them. Yeah. You're restricting the life that you can give. Yeah. You're restricting the power you can release. You yeah. have the power that raised Yeshua from the dead and you restrict that when you curse people when yeah. you eye roll when you mm -hmm. oh how about we weren't even going to go here today how we're about going there <laughs> we're going there girls pull up your we're going <laughs> put your seat belts on i think i saw my seatbelt sometimes today these days we need like roller coaster things with a yes the one goes down. <laughs> so uh, i have so, we have such cool things to talk about okay this is not a cool thing but let's say this you know there's times that i have been and i'm going to use brenda's example y'all know she's my best friend like we we she's my person Sometimes I can reduce other people by, I can curse other people in her eyes because if I tell them something about them, so say I'm like Misty, you know, Misty, we, I have to tell you what happened. She, she did this and you know what happened with her and her husband and this happened with her kids and blah, blah, blah. Guess what? I've just cursed her to Brenda's eyes. Now Brenda sees her through a reduced vision. Now she sees her through a filter of something I told her. Uh-oh. Oh. Ouch. So we'll, we'll, when we get to exes, we'll talk about how uh, you can murder people. Let's uh, put that one on your back burner, ladies. Yeah. Put that on, put that in your yeah. cauldron and simmer. <laughs> and and hey, Charlie, I love that. And um and 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 remember that we just came out of Deuteronomy, right? And remember what happened in Deuteronomy. Um, gosh, you guys, we're already out of Deuteronomy and we're in Genesis. Is this so wild? This is like warp speed. I mean, this is warp speed. Anyway, um, I digress. So there was two mountains, right? There was, and please don't ask me, I haven't had much of tea this morning. I have, I have very limited brain power. So we have <laughs> a lot of women here who are really smart. So write the mountain <laughs> names it. in the comments. Yeah, round the mountain names on there. We have there. Mount Gerizim, I, I think, and then the other one, Ebal, was it maybe? But anyway, don't quote me on that. But, um, but half of the tribes were on one, this is going to make me cry. Half of the tribes were on one side, right? And they were to proclaim the blessings and the other half was on the other side and they were to proclaim the curses okay these were all the tribes of israel this was all the tribes okay so that's what they were doing but do you realize in seeing the redemptive plan of god we have to always another baseline right write this down baseline redemption everything yes. is about redemption yes that's a baseline, baseline. For this year. Everything. Baseline. Everything is about redemption. Everything. If you don't understand a scripture and it's like, wow, like, okay, just pop up in the book of Revelation. Okay. Just like, what? This is what's happening. He is, everything is returning us to that place because he's calling his people into redemption. He is the redeemer. He is the great redeemer. 
He sent Yeshua. Yeshua is salvation. Yeshua T. He is my salvation. Yeshua T. He's your salvation. Okay, grab it. Anyway, so in the midst of the, the redemption, blessings are being called, curses are being called. What? Curses, you realize that curses are the unrevealed blessings. So Ooh, the curse comes again. out. I know you're going to start stirring the tar and plucking the chickens, guys. <laughs> curses are the un they are the unrevealed blessings. This is and this is where I'm coming from with this. When you are restricted and when you are limited, if the redemptive plan of God is to bring you back to him, he is going to bring things into your life that are going to restrict you and they are going to bind you up and they are going to make you cry out for salvation, to cry out to him. Read it. It's in the word. Oh my gosh, right now, my mind is blowing up with all the scriptures. Think about all the stories we've been told. I'm going to send you out. I'm going to remove you. For Hey, it happens in this Torah portion. They get sent out from the garden. Okay, why? It was a blessing in disguise. We look at it like a curse, but it was truly a blessing. They couldn't live there and eat the tree of life and be stuck in that position forever. They had to go out into the land. There were things that needed to be done to bring them to redemption. And not just them, all of mankind, which is us. Here we are. We get to be here. So curses are things that will eventually become blessings when we see how the hand of God will bring about a turning in us. It's not pleasant. It's not going to feel good. It's a restriction. When you put your children yeah, on restriction, yeah, it's because yeah. you're trying to teach them a lesson exactly. so they do better and be right. better. Which is why we're not supposed to curse, guys. So they're That's first... why we're, we're not supposed to curse out of this pay right here. The pay, pay. Shut your pay hole. Hashtag We're not supposed to do it because your pay hole. When we do it, it's not redemptive. Mm -mm. Now, if you are being instructed by the Spirit of God to bring correction, that's completely different. Yeah, but you if you're talking out of the eye roll, if you're talking out of the wound, if you're talking out of the fracture in your soul, that's different. And so, when we bring curses, it's 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 not coming from a place of a a a, a, a purpose of redemption. But when the Holy One brings curse. Like when he was having his six tribes crying out the curses, it was to awaken, to convict, to cause, to cause the children to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so far away from him. I need to get back to him. I don't want to live like this. That's what it's for because his plan is redemptive to grab hold of us and bring us back into a place of redemption. And he will use hardships to do that. And so that's, that's my two cents on the whole thing. Well, yeah. And that brings us to a baseline is it's, it's all good and it's okay to not be okay, but it is all good because even if it's bad, it's good because he is good. You know, you know, we can do the little shouts in our congregations. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. But then mm -hmm. something bad happens and we forget the God is good all the time, right. all the time. Right. God is good. And we forget the Romans eight twenty eight moments. Right. Even if it's bad, it's good. So right. can you stand it and say, this is good. I'm crying. I'm broken. I'm hurt. I'm devastated. It will be. I'm fractured. Okay, Father, where's the good? Show me the good. Are you showing me be. how not to treat someone because they hurt my feelings? Mm -hmm. You're showing me how not to treat other people in this? Thank you. Thank you, Father, for showing me that. Look yes. how quickly you get out of it. Okay. Um, and the, the, last, uh, the last thing I want to put on here is a baseline before we jump in. Uh, and Brenda, don't let me forget. We talk about missing words. Is there a connecto, by the way? Yeah, they missed. That's a missing word in your King James version. Um, um, yeah, it's not even. It's not even in there. It's <laughs> not even in there. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> must drink. The final baseline that I want to make before we hop into Genesis one one. This is not a salvation thing. Yeah, the Torah. We are, when we're talking through, we have a lot of believers in here that are brand new. They're coming in from, they have never even, they Torah, this is the first time they've even heard the word Torah. They've even never said it before. And they're heard that it's a works thing. We have to work for our salvation. We have all these rules, all these things, all these, th th none of this is a salvation. We all, the baseline here in this group 
Yeshua is the only way the salvation to the Holy One. He is our salvation. You and him, that's your salvation right there. Now, all the things we're going to talk about starting today and moving forward is how to have a better life, how to hit the mark, how to not miss the mark. Abundant how to not living. Miss, yes. How to be blessed, how to be fruitful and multiply, how to walk out your callings, how to be inspired so that you breathe life into others and help them walk out their callings, how to bring heaven and the garden of Eden to earth. That's what we're talking about. We're not yeah. talking about works. You could do one more, not do one more thing out of Torah and just work on you and your relationship with the Holy one. And just the two of you, I promise you'll end up doing probably 99% of Torah by that, but this is not a salvation thing. So if you have questions that are about, oh, am I going to lose my salvation because I don't, I don't follow these commandments? The answer is no, this isn't a salvation thing. Okay. Right. That's our baseline here. This might not be your group if you feel like you have to work for your salvation, or it might be your group because you need to hear this. So baseline. Good deal. Done. Yeah, that's, that's a really good This is abundant life, you guys. Torah is the abundant life. Yes. It's what Yeshua walked. And we want to walk just like him. Yes. It is he how did he it. lived. It's if what he, did he it. said. Yes. If he did it, we want to do it. If he that's celebrated right. it, we want to celebrate it. If I'm he in. didn't celebrate it, I kind of don't want to celebrate it. Yeah. If he didn't do it, I don't want to do it. I just want to be yeah. like him. I used to wear the what would Jesus do bracelet. Okay. That's what we're doing. Just saying. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> fair sheet. What a fun way we're going to start. Genesis, I just want to, some, some, some may not know that the first, a lot of times people use when they're learning Hebrew, they actually study out uh, Torah through these, that very first Genesis 1 1. Genesis 1 1. Okay, get ready, guys, because I'm actually going to try it. Where Good I girl. Wrote it, I wrote it out for myself. This is going to be a uh, Fisher Price version, and Brenda will correct me. Here we go. Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashamayim veet heretz. Did I do it right? Ha-aretz. Yeah, you did great. Ha-aretz. Uh-huh. That's the first. And what happens is in this, in these, this, people learn Hebrew actually by learning Genesis 1-1, just staring at it, learning every facet, every syllable, every member, every, everything of just those seven words. That blew my mind. And I'm going to dig into that maybe next Shabbat, but not tomorrow. So good. Just those seven words. And do you think it's an accident that there are seven words to start out the words? I don't think it's an accident that there's seven words. Many of you who've seen the teaching, I know Simi did a teaching on the, on the uh, we, we know uh, Dr. Alwine does teaching on the, using the candelabra, right? Seven, there's the seven. That doesn't look right. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So uh, do, you have seven, same happens with these words. And there is one little word in the middle, et. Yes. And there's three on each side of the et. Now, for me, when we start talking about this kind of stuff, my brain seizes up. So we start talking grammar. I fully start <laughs> having seizures in my brain. Some of you, like someone <clears throat> who might be hosting this with me, uh, get excited about these things. I don't. They, my brain seizes. I have a really hard time. I just, it's not Fisher Price enough for me. But I'm going to tell you that I, I got really excited about this because what happens is, is that th there is actually the et in the middle of that is a direct object of the verb on each side. So what happens is it's pointing to, I mean, it's pointing to what's happening on each side. Brenda, can you explain that better? Because you need to. No, I mean, that's, nerd, that's, it out. That's, nerd it out for me better than I No, did. no, that is exactly it. <clears throat> uh, the word et in Hebrew is aleph. Tav. The first. Did you hear me? And the last. Did you hear me? I am me? the Aleph and the Tav. Aleph. Alpha, Omega. Tav. So you want to know where Yeshua is? <laughs> he is everywhere. Genesis because 1 1. Yeshua. He is the Et. <laughs> he said he is the Aleph and the Tav. It says in, in uh, English, it says Alpha and Omega, but he was a Hebrew man, Hebrew speaking man. He was a Jewish man. And he was speaking Hebrew, and so he wouldn't have said Aleph, ta, uh, Aleph what is it? Uh, Alpha Omega. He would have said Aleph Tav. Yeah. 
and that's the beginning, right? Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew Aleph bet. It's the image of, of the father wrapping his arms around you and saying, I got you. You're in me. It's the, the predecessor. He was from the beginning, the beginning of the beginnings, from all of before, the creator, the holy one, the majestic, the all in all, the one, the echad, the one. That's the Aleph. It is an image of our creator, our father. And he's got his arms wrapped around us and we're right in the middle of him. He's got it. And Tav is the symbol it's the symbol of the cross. It's the symbol of his covenant. It is him putting his stamp of approval, saying, this is who I am. This is who I am. This is who I say I am. And, and I have proven that this is who I am. And I will always keep my word. I will always keep my covenant. Now, you have the, the father wrapping his arms around you and saying, I will always keep my covenant. And who is that? That's Yeshua. He's the one that came and wrapped his arms around us and said, I, w I am here and watch what I'm going to do for you. I am going to keep this covenant. And he took our place. He established the covenant for eternity. Physically, again, it, it was already done, but he physically, again, established it there. And that's what he does. And so when Charlie's saying, I'm seeing the et in the middle, and there's the three words before, and there's the three words after, and it's the middle, it's the middle branch of the menorah that supports and holds everything. And it's a direct object. It's saying before and after, before and after. And he's saying, I've got this. Because Bereshit, bara, Elohim, you're hearing the words, you know that Elohim is him, that's him, et hashamayim, va'et aret, ha'aretz. And he's saying the heavens and the earth, and then I'm going to let it go back to you, Charlie, you've got this. But the heavens and the earth, when he says the heavens and the earth, he doesn't just mean the heavens and the earth. He means the heavens and the earth are a completeness. It's everything. It's it's. It's not an idiom, but it's kind of like an idiom when you say the heavens and the earth. It's everything. So here he is in the middle, pointing in both ways. I've got this. That's who we serve. That's, that's Elohim. And that and word it, at Aleph Tav. That is beautiful. And, and I think that if you go back and it's understandable. If, if they're saying they're learning Hebrew, some of you are like, oh, learning Hebrew. I can barely even conjugate a regular verb i'm trying to learn i learned spanish and conjugating a spanish verb it was like oh and and now hebrew and but but it's now getting exciting to me because even as i'm looking as i wrote out bearish sheet and i put the letters i mean it's the very first word of torah mm -hmm. i feel like we should know it what if you yes. just spent tomorrow and look up the letters and and even if you have to close your ears brenda google each letter ah! Go to like oh, Chabad.org and look up the letter and just get an overall understanding or write Brenda and ask her what it is, except for she'll be with her grandbabies. Yeah. It's Bet Resh Aleph Sheen. Uh, I wrote the wrong thing on here. Aleph, what did I wrote my thing? Aleph Sheen Vav Tav. I put, what did I put? I put Fav. It's Vav. Sorry, guys. I wrote Vav. Fav. That's not, that's a wrong movie. It's not in Fav. <laughs> It's a, it's a Vav. So looking up those letters, if that's the first word of Torah, and those are the first letters of Torah, if we really wrap ourselves around the first usage rules that, and, and for everyone that's new, again, it's just, we want to know if it's used for the first time, it's important to understand why it's used. Why is that word used? Where is it used? What's the context? What does it mean? Because as it's repeated throughout the rest of the word, we can come back to it because we know we know Yeshua, we know Paul, we know all the, the disciples when they're writing their letters, they're referring back to Torah and they're talking about these these words. We want to know what are they talking about so we get it, right? So we're trying to give you the decoder ring for yeah. the love letter. Oh, yeah. In and the New Testament, every time you see in the beginning, that's what they're talking about. I was just going to say, when you're seeing in the beginning, wait, wait, do you guys hear this? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God at. And the word was God. What? 
He yeah. just quoted Genesis 1-1 because you know this is a Greek <laughs> translation. This is a Greek translation of a Hebrew, from a Hebrew man and someone's gr doing a Greek. You have a Greek scribe who they pay to translate him into Greek and then from Greek into English through, through uh, King, uh, King James translation. So do you hear it now? When you see in the beginning, you're going to go back. This is the first time it's used. Is that crazy? Is anybody excited about that? Or am I just, I'm the only nerd and I'm the Fisher Price girl and you guys should be excited. Yeah. Those of you who are like big studiers, right? Misty, you quit laughing at me. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to, a couple of things else that I have that was exciting that I learned. I'm excited okay. about everything. This is crazy. I haven't even had coffee yet. I mean, I good thing, huh? I know. Just knowing, just over. sitting there and sitting on that, that you have a picture of the, of the menorah in Genesis 1-1. You're like, I just need to figure out what that means. Brenda, I have a question for you. Why does the first letter, I've already asked uh -huh. you this. Mm -hmm. Why does the first letter of the first word mm -hmm. in the first book uh -huh. of Torah start with bet and not Aleph? Interesting. Hmm. Well, you know, ask 10 people, you'll get 42 different answers. <laughs> but this is my two cents for the moment. So um, in the Hebrew Aleph Bet, the Aleph is silent. I'm going to start crying. Eh. The Aleph is silent. So the Aleph is, like I explained to you a moment ago, the Aleph is the father. It is, he is the creator. He is, he is, um, it's called the progenitor. It's so, in other words, he is before anything else. He is bigger than anything else he's before and he's he is our all and all right that's the letter aleph but the letter aleph in the hebrew language is completely silent there's no sound the only sound that's given to it is by how it's placed in a word or if it's given vowels so it's basically what is around it what has been given around it that creates the sound from it but the letter Aleph is silent. And, but, but think about this. What did the father do in his creation? He created a family, right? The letter Bet is the family. It is the kingdom. It's the, it's the, it's, it's all about the family, the legacy, the, the life that is coming forth what is being birthed and so how appropriate that that would be the first letter because the very first letter of the torah is all about how the father is pouring out himself his essence of who he is to create something that will be here and that's us all of creation and all of the people, all of mankind, that's where, and that's, that's my two cents of why Can the I, first letter is the bet and not the did this just Did I just imagine this saying, is there a saying, silent as an ox? Is that a saying or did I just make it up in my head? Has anyone know, heard that saying? But I like it. I'll write it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start quoting Everyone it. Everyone look. I feel like I've heard that somewhere like, oh, silent as an ox. But I mean, one of the pictures of Aleph is the ox, the strong, yes, you know, yes. so when he says he, we're yoked to him, it's because mm -hmm. he's the strong ox that can pull and can do all the work, right? That's but, right. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so these are the really questions is. when you're looking at stuff that I'm, you yeah. know, as you, the, the more you're doing this, you're going to be like, hmm, why are we starting with the letter bet and not Aleph? Mm -hmm. yeah. why, are, why are some things happening? So it's really cool. Really and go, th go through Genesis 1-1. I know, gosh. And then, and then you're like, oh, it's, it can't be time yet to move on to the second Parsha on Sunday. What? I don't have time to do what? I don't have to do <laughs> the first one yet. I know, right? Oh, it goes that way. Oh. It's like everything's in warp speed. That's why it's so fun when we, when we start getting into Shabbat because the warp stops during Shabbat mm -hmm. and you get those hours of being able to just um, rest. And it's not just a physical rest. But think of it this way. You know that the glory the the kavo the glory of god it's um it's it comes from the word that means heavy weight right but when you feel the presence of god coming down it is a heavy weight right, right. and it and what does it do it rests on you mm -hmm. so t t 
tonight at sundown, I just want you to take a moment, take a deep breath and experience the rest with the weight of the presence of God resting upon you. And it doesn't matter if you're in a busy situation or you've got a family and you've got people coming and going and you've got things and you've got the TV blaring and all the things that are happening in life. You may not be able to have a, 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 an environment in this moment that is quiet and serene so that you can get the rest, but you will get a rest. You will have a time, even if it's when you're in bed and you put the covers over your head, allow the weightiness of his glory to rest upon you because you are his precious beloved. Yes. He is intimately interested in during the time of Shabbat, the 24 hours of Shabbat, where he said that he was resting from work and that he wanted us to rest from work for that period of time so that we could have that intimacy and be uh, reflecting him. So if he stops, we stop, right? If he goes, hey, we go. Would you look up that word? I'm curious somebody, uh, or look it up over that, but cause, because I was doing some studies and the difference between Shabbat and rest, actually Shabbat mm -hmm. means to stop, to cease from. Mm -hmm. The word rest is nuach, where Noah comes from out of the same verb. And my understanding is that might've been around the first, that I don't know that this is the first usage of the word rest yet, that he's saying mm -hmm. stop and cease. Um, and so just interesting because it was something I was doing some studying on Shabbat for a course we're putting together, but um, just interesting. Other thing I wanna say about that, I was, wasn't gonna go to, to Shabbat yet, but I love this. Um, you know, life, shouldn't be bleeding from one day into the next. That's not how our lives should be, be lived. When that's not being good stewards of our days. If they're being bleeding from one day into the next day into the next day. And the seventh day is actually a day when it's the kingdom of God gets to be here on earth. We get to practice going back to Eden. I mean, you've heard Simi teaching on back to Eden. It's beautiful. Just learning or, or go in and watch doc, uh, some of Dr. Uh, Al Wine's um, creation gospels. I mean, start it. Blow your mind. One. Yeah, just get ready. <laughs> Lord, help me. But there, 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 there has to be, I wrote this down from something I was reading. There has to be a rhythm of inconvenient rest. Mm. You have to create this rhythm of inconvenient rest. And what I mean by that is that when you practice inconveniencing yourself, you build this muscle. You build this muscle that then if someone inconveniences you, you don't react the same way that you reacted before. Hmm. That's good. Does that make sense? That's good. It's inconvenient. So everyone, we've, we, we want you to know it's, it's, don't think that we're all just going, oh, push, oh, sundown. Okay, we're done. We have where everything's perfect. We're just resting now. No, it is psycho. Sometimes it's crazy. It's stressful. Just sitting still because you know that you, in your mind, there's still things happening that you got to do. That it is a, it is it is a discipline. It is a making yourself go to this place. It's a sometimes it's an inconvenient rest. You got stuff. It's not convenient for you to stop everything and rest. But if you practice a discipline of inconvenient rest, yeah, then when things come up that are inconvenient, you're going to be strong and ready for them because you have that muscle because you've spent the time. And when things are coming up that are bombarded, other things that are inconvenient. You're, you're going to have had your hands full, like we learned. You're going to be able to then use empty hands, tear down, full hands, build. You'll yeah. be able to build. You'll be able to lift yeah. up. You're going to be able to bring life. You're going to be able to not limit others. You're going to be able to do blessings. But if one day is bleeding into the next day is bleeding into the next, that's mm -hmm. why it's a gift to you. It is a gift. Yeah. I've been given the gift of a treadmill before. That was not a convenient gift. <laughs> Have you been given the gift of a vacuum cleaner? I'm just saying, not a convenient gift. But if you used it and got ready with that inconvenient gift, when someone happened to pop over, your floor was vacuumed. So it was an inconvenient pop in. Now you're happy you used your inconvenient gift. Does that make sense? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm not saying your gift is inconvenient, but I'm just saying. It's, it's not easy for everyone. No, oh. no please understand that, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, we we have had um, a lot of experiences and this isn't the the time but we'll have to we need to have like a just a girls hangout time where we can just talk about things because um, uh, there is a lot to 
learning how to Shabbat. And uh, um, I don't want to give you the impression, you know, that it's all just easy, peasy, perfect. If it was, it wouldn't be very valuable, would it? It, no. it doesn't come at a good, if it doesn't come at a great price, it's really not very valuable. Like the virtuous woman, really virtuous, eh, valor, the woman of valor. She is amazing, that woman of valor. And it says, who can, who can find a woman of valor? Her price is far above rubies. Yeah, it's, that's, that's Shabbat. That's Shabbat. Laura says it's not selfish. It's hard on our flesh, but our spirit yeah. loves it. That's oh. the truth. Yes. That is absolute truth. Can I just ask a question? I mean, we're, gonna, we're getting a little dirty. We're already at 12 o'clock. Oh, Jesus. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> that three times. Okay. I want to ask. It's interesting. I read something about the letter bet. So like, okay, we're starting from the beginning. It says Bereshit. The first letter of the first book of the first everything is bet. And I looked this up and I heard, read a commentary. The, the three lines of the letter bet equal east, south, and west. Mm -hmm. And that the Midrash states that it's similar to the construction of the earth. If you look at the earth, east, south, and west all have continents deep in them. They're made where, but the north is the only opening. There's, it's the only part of the world that has an opening. Okay, I, this is going to get super nerdy, so go get your coffee or something. There's no mass under the North Pole, but there's mass under the other three sections. So what it's saying is it leaves an opening. It leaves an opening for it's not incompleteness, but it leaves an opening for man to come in and fill it. So starting it up that there was, it was already coming in, that there was an opening for man to fill it. It was also the evil comes from the North. That, and it's, it's a, there's an inclination that can happen that he built something with the opening for us to have a choice. Is that it? Did I just get crazy right there for a minute? You just got there's some crazy girls in here. Are you good with me being crazy? Hey, when you when you said that about the opening, about leaving the opening, I'm 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 reminded that um, that uh, the word for female is hollow. <laughs> the root, Hebrew root word for the for the word female, nekava in Hebrew, is hollow to excavate, hollow out. It's, so, it's, like with the word bed, it's the picture of a house, right? Isn't that yeah. a picture of a house? Yep. So you have the house with a Family. door and there's mm -hmm. an opening. So just, mm -hmm. so when you start going through each one of the letters, it'll be, in, I'd love to hear you guys tell me what you're, what you're finding out about each one of the letters of e even just bare sheet, just Lord help you if you do all seven words, but just doing bare sheet and fill, build, build your hieroglyphic of what is that, what is that word picture look to you as you're going mm -hmm. through the whole thing and you'll see this beautiful thing of this house being built mm -hmm. for not only the holy one to dwell with us in his presence and to bring completion and to bring the messiah in and you see that in the first word in the beginning in that in just that word i think you guys are going to get excited if you do it so yeah absolutely there's so I much really nerdy so much i got really nerdy did. today you're very good i like I know your nerdy it's guide one, two, in and in, in, in one, two. Okay, you have seven letters in the first one, one. Fun fact, in one, two, there's 14. So seven times two, there's 14 in the second one. So just take that wherever you want. Um, what else? I love all these I things so. that you dig out. You're so smart. There's, in Genesis 2, 1, this, there's three lines of seven words. And then he rests, and then he rests after three lines of seven words. It's a random fact. And what else did I learn out? God is, says uh, 35 times, so, you know, seven times five. The sky is seven times three, 21 times. Light in, is in, the, in the first chapter, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the creation story. Oh, in Light the is seven, story. In seven times and then God saw that it was Tov. I think that's what we have to say. We have to talk about Tov and low Tov. So God saw that it was Tov. He says that seven times as well, meaning, and it's translated as good. So, so, so we have a hard time with that, don't we? We have a hard time with, because he says he's looked at man and it, he says it was not good, but he didn't say it was not good. He said it was low Tov. And Tov is the inability to, when something is tov, we'll say, oh, that's not good. Something is tov, it has the inability to reproduce. It is not fruitful. 
So when we see something, it's something we don't want it to be reproduced. And this is going to get really important when we start talking about things like leprosy and we start talking about some things being unclean or things. What we want, what we're looking, we want to be really careful is like, did God really say, oh, this isn't good and this isn't bad? He's saying, oh, this is, this is fruitful. This will multiply. You know, oh, this is fruitful. This will multiply. This will last for eternity. This will let you realize you're not drinking a new cup of water today. I mean, I'm sitting here drinking my water. This is not new. There's nothing new under the sun. This is the same water from Genesis 1-1 when he created, when there was water. That will blow your mind if you think about it for a moment. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Stay with us. I mean, really, I mean, even your food you're eating, it may be genetically modified. We maybe have some, it, but it, ultimately the root, somewhere deep inside there, it's still the same food. No different than you. Mm. You may have been genetically modified, but there is, <laughs> you are still that same seed from the very beginning. There's still part of that inside of you. Can I get dirty too? Go get dirty. No, not dirty. Nerdy. Okay. So the word, I wish that I had PowerPoints. Um, Charlie's going to, she's sending me to classes so that I can learn how to do PowerPoints because I'm, I'm like, I don't know how to do it. So anyway, um, so the word tov is um, tet, vav, bet. Those are the three letters that make the word tov. And the really cool thing is that, and this is um, if you ever wanted to, to um, jump over and uh, take, take my course on Hebrew. I don't teach Hebrew like, um, I, what I'm trying to teach you in Hebrew is what is the energy behind every letter. So um, you can study the letters any way you want to, but what you're going to get from me is more of what's the energy behind the letter. So what's the energy behind the word tov? Tet is the uh, first letter, and tet is a, like a container. It looks kind of like this, like that. It's a container that it's kind of, whatever's inside is concealed. You can't see it, but there's an opening, so it's going to come out, but it's kind of contained like this, and, um, and so it, it's something inside is hidden, and then the vav is the letter that is connecting, it's a connector, like a tent peg. It connects things. And then the last letter is the bet, which is the family or a king on his throne or a kingdom or an heir, you know, heir. It's the, it's the extension of your family, right? So in the word tov, it's talking about the hiddenness. Uh, tov is like Messiah, the, all the things that are hidden within him, and they will be released when it's time. It's like a womb. A baby's going to come forth when it's the time, but you can't see it, but you know it's there, but you can't see it unless, you know, you have these technical things like Charlie, these 3D things that you can <laughs> you peek inside, but, but really, you know, it's the things that are hidden. And so the things that are inside of you are sometimes hidden so that you can't see them because there's something, there's water can be poured in and washed, the things can be washed, all kinds of things can happen inside that letter inside that tet. So the word tov is a picture of things that are hidden that are being connected to benefit the family, to benefit the people of God, to benefit the kingdom of God, to benefit each individual and everybody collectively. So when you're saying tov and we say that it's good, sometimes the good is hidden. Sometimes we don't see the good. But we know because God is redemptive and he's always about redemption. And we know that Romans 8.28 says that all things are working together for good. And it's not just Romans 8.28, but it, it encapsulates it in 8.28. That sometimes when things happen to us, it's not good in the moment. It's painful. It's hurtful. It's hard. Sometimes we're fractured. Sometimes we're wounded. There's a lot of things that are not good in the moment, but if you will hang on and, and, and go to that place of being able to trust who the creator truly is, remember him as the olive, the one that wraps himself, that we're in the middle of him. We can't go anywhere that his love is not. We cannot get away from the love of God. Not height, nor depth, nor angels, nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present. Nor, we all know the scripture or things to come. Not even death or life can separate us from the love of God. And that's the picture of Tov. It is knowing who he is 
and it might not be good in this moment, momentarily. It might feel like it's a curse momentarily, but trust that his redemptive power will bring it to good because that's what he is releasing. So it might be hidden, but that's what he's releasing. And when Charlie said Lotov, I love that, Charlie. Thank you so much for saying that because what it's saying is in this moment, that thing is not Tov. It is not releasing life. It might be releasing death. It might be re releasing harm or any other thing, but it is not releasing life. That's what Lotov means. It doesn't mean evil. The word for evil is completely different. Lotov means not good in that it is not releasing life. So it gives you a little bit different perspective, I hope. Yeah, hopefully when you read that, you're seeing something different than, than you're seeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I was thinking when I was reading about that too, is as we bring the, when uh, I just said Lotov, that man was alone, that was not, there was no life in man being alone. There's no life when we are not in community. There's no mm -hmm. life when we're alone. That's one of the reasons that we're, we're trying to put this community together is so that there is life restored back in, yes. in those that might feel alone. I, I saw a letter from, a note from one of the girls, a comments. She says, I'm in Idaho. I have no... Uh, no community and i just loving that there's here's a place in here and she was over here in the portion so go find her uh, there's a she's in idaho and and she loves that there's people now she there's women that she can connect with because it is low tove for us to be alone it is it is low tove yeah it is it is not there's no life yeah. in that it's not fruitful we can't multiply yeah. our, like our the planet god no 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 we cannot mm -hmm. we cannot move forward in that mm -hmm. Do you want to hit is there connecto super fast or not? We'll say. Oh, it. well, you know, I was thinking in, in saying that just, you know, because we pull this woman out. And if you look at the original Hebrew in there, it's the is there connecto. Uh, yeah. I see that Miss Simi is over in our Facebook group. If she wants to start she popping some comments, we want to read them. I'm, I'm, I can read. I'm not going to comment anything over there right now because it takes me into a, a funny place and on my screen, but I can read them. Um, she, there's, there, there's like 116 comments over on Facebook already. So everyone watching the replay, we can't wait to see what you add to that. But, uh, it is fun. If you think about a female, think about fe every female. I immediately saw mama bear. I actually saw mama moose. Cause That's I mean, a mama moose, mama bear ain't got nothing on a mama moose. I'm telling you they're, they're scary they and they're, are. they're mean and scary, but mamas, I mean the female of every, um, the female of most animals, they're the hunters. They're the ones that go out and hunt. I mean, look at a lion. They go and hunt and bring the food back to the, to the pride. They're the ones that go out. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's, it's really fun when you really taking on, I was speaking to one of our speakers yesterday, I, we were having a chat. We we're just saying, what beautiful, what it, it's so beautiful to grab on to our, who God has called us to be and standing in the place of being that is their connecto. He pulled oh. us up and he said, I want you to stand beside not stand by your man. This is not a Tammy Wynette song. This is a, this is a, this is you stand up and you protect your family and you surround your family. That's what Proverbs 31 is about. Mm -hmm. That you, you rise up and be who you're called to be. You're not a throwing your bra on a fire. We're not burning anything. We're not bashing anyone. We are, we are wanting to be, uh, I mean, look at the, um, if you go back, if you, you can get in, I'll, I'll repost a million times so you can listen to, if you haven't listened to <laughs> Deborah Flanagan, just talking about loving your husbands. And this is for, if you're single, if you're married, you can use it for, you can use the same principles in your walk with um, your friends and your family members, but just really beautiful wisdom because we need, and it, it takes someone fierce to yes. be humble. It takes someone fierce to submit to what God's called you to do. Yes. It's, be, it's, it's not telling you to submit to evil. You're submitting to him, to the father, to the holy one. And that's what he pulled you out and created you to be. Are you looking it up? Oh, man. Well, Azar is the helper. And it's actually, you guys, you want to get your mind blown? Azar is the word that when in, in all through the Psalms, all through the scripture, when it says, the Lord is my help in this present trouble, the Lord is my helper and my shield. Um, where do I look? I look up into the hills from whence cometh my help. That is the word Azar. 
<laughs> it is a helper, an aid. It is uh, talking about girding, surrounding, strengthening. It's, it's all about might. It is, um, it's a warrior term. And we're called Azer Konegdo, and Konegdo being um, from the word, uh, uh, anyway, it means to be in front of. So it's the one that's in front of. It is the person who is, um, uh, how would I put it? Um, you're in the sight of the, you're in the sight of the enemy first, like you're putting yourself out there. It is the one who goes before. It's a warrior term. So Azer Konegdo uh, is actually the word for a helpmate in Genesis, where it's saying, um, it's not good for a man to be alone. I'm going to make him a helper comparable to him. In King James, it doesn't actually even, um, it, it, in, in the um, Blue Letter Bible, in, if you look it up in King James, it's not even going to have as their connecto in there. Uh, it's just a translation thing. But where would you go to find the full thing? Because a lot of people are going, well, where are Bible, you getting Biblehub.org. Biblehub.org. I always use Blue Letter Bible. Dot org. I always use it in conjunction with biblehub.org, B-I-B-L-E-H-U-B.org. And, the re and then look into the, you'll be clicking on the, the interlinear, I-N-T in Bible Hub. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring everything up in Hebrew and English. It's going to have the Hebrew up above. It'll have a transliteration, so it'll help you to um, be able to say the words. And then it'll have the, the English definition right below it. Uh, and it reads right to left. So it, it's a really great tool, biblehub.org. If you need some help with it, just send me an email, brenda.therootedcafe at gmail.com. brenda.therootedcafe with a K at gmail.com. Anyway, um, so Bible Hub will, will show that to you. It'll show you the actual Hebrew words. Um, Blue Letter Bible is an, an awesome, great tool, but what it does is it reduces things down to the basic, um, and so it'll leave out the helper words, and so it just assumes that that's a, that, 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 that that's a helper word. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is a warrior term, and it's really a term that's used in, in, in warring, and it's talking about armies and battalions of armies and mighty men, and, and it's talking about things like that. So uh, it's really interesting that that is what the Holy One himself said that we were. Female. And that's where Miriam is. I mean, I know that yes. what was given to us before we started the, the, comp yes. the summit was that we were calling forth the Miriams. And, yes. and part of battle was they sent the, the, the women out in worship. They would send mm -hmm. the women. I mean, look at Miriam went out with her tambourines and they started worshiping and singing the songs and it brings down the, it brings down the strongholds. That's part of the word Isha is that we open up the windows. We open the windows. So the revelation comes into your home and those women, we, we want to speak life to you that you're in a home that maybe you're the only one walking Torah. You're the only believer in your home. Open your windows, bring a fresh anointing in. Get rid of the frown, get rid of the scowl, get rid of the eye rolls, submit all those to the father and ask him, how do you walk it out so that you are tov? How do you walk the things out that are tov in your home? How do you get rid of the things that are low tov in your heart and in your mind so that you can actually open windows up and let fresh anointing come in yes. so that you can bring in the revelation so that you can fight so that you, you don't need the, I mean, you don't need a, a, a war room to shut the door. You literally are the war room. You are the war yeah. room. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you are. Because that's how you're created to function. You're created with a space inside of you. You're created with a desire to turn your face toward the Holy One. You're, you're created with a desire to hear the Spirit of God quickly. Quickly. Who was it that came to the tomb? with Yeshua. It was the women. Why? Because they, they were yearning after him. It doesn't, it is not in any way diminishing men. Please understand that we're, that is not where we're coming from. But what we're saying is this is a group of ladies. So we're talking about you. We're talking about how you were created. Yeah. And, and if you were men, we would talk to you about the man words. Of oh how the man gosh. Was created. Yes, yes, but yes. We don't have those yes. parts. So we're not going to talk about men. Oh, I love your restraint there, Charlie. I know. <laughs> I used so another word it, yesterday. I, oh, no, it no. It wasn't nasty. <laughs> I'm a nurse. <laughs> no, I'm a, 
<laughs> okay, so is there connecto is a great word. It's a word that means it means a helper. And then there's the word female. I think I got the two of them, except I apologize. Just forgive me. Um, the word for um, female. And then we have, uh, oh, we had four words. We had another word too. Um, oh, eshet chayil. That's another word about women. That's eshet chayil. That is the virtuous woman. Eshet if you, chayil. If you get crazy and you want to, can I show, if you get crazy and you want to read a book, ooh, ooh, read at your own yes. risk. But read it yes. your own risk. Yes, it's good. It is a good book. You just have to, you know, be... Be discerning. It is written by, you know, be, be, read, read through be it and discerning. ask for the Holy One to, to yeah. with every book. It's written by every a man. Every book. Everything I mean, that we say, be discerning. <laughs> every, even us, <laughs> yeah. especially me, uh, be discerning and look it up yourself. That's but right. The book is called Guardian Angel by Skip Moen. Yeah. And it yeah. really is talking a lot about the, uh, is there connect and about his, you know, how he, you know, how he's honoring of his wife being that, that person, that person yes. and, and yes. how that we really miss so much of the word when we don't understand mm -hmm. the role, not just like of, of the female, because that's, you know, the Holy spirit, you know, and there's a paradigm oh, yeah. shift that happens mm -hmm. when you really get to know uh, what's happening at that, at, at that level. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we just want to be in alignment with that, but yeah. Uh, it's interesting because some of this he says we does God designed women as servant priests, as covenant bearers, and as perfect partners. Yeah. Um, yeah, yep. that's exactly right because we're made in His image, ladies. Right, and and unfortunately, <laughs> isn't it isn't it what happens? Look at look at you have the with the feminist movement, this revolution that happened. Women took off their bras, they're burning it. We're doing all these things. When when there's truth, all of a sudden there's a revelation of something, and then it's perverted, and then what, so that so that we can't hear the truth anymore. And what we just want to bring back is a the healthy balance of what that truth is in your yes. life. You know that, Amen. so that you can be the per, the perfect partner. Because I don't believe in a fifty fifty partnership, in a friendship, in a marriage. No. In a covenant, I believe no. in a hundred, a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. All in. You got to be all in. And Good. so what that means is that as women, we can be all in. We can be 100% all in. And we can, we can be everything that God created us to be. We can reflect. He created us to be in his image. His, his, sel his selim. It's his, his shadow. It's in his image that we are to reflect him. And in his image, he is the helper because that's who we cry out to. In his image, he is the one who brings forth life. And that's how we are created. We are in his image. And so we get to do that. He is not, he, he is not bringing about, um, uh, he's not diminishing people uh, in order to uh, make himself bigger and stronger. So in, in, in all of that, uh, it's really important that we just, we really purpose to operate as his reflection. And that's a challenge, you know, and it's a challenge for us to be, to be filled with his presence so that the dross gets burned off so that the yes. hay and stubble is gone. We don't have time for hay and stubble people. We don't have time. You no know, straw men, tour, no straw women. No, the next tour portion starts on Sunday. It's like, we don't have time. <laughs> straw women do not make it to the Wizard of Oz, to the Oz. So no straw, no straw people. No, we no. also use, we have, that's book, another book we talk about all the time. And I, I, I grab it if I'm like, I'm having a- What do you big, need? Oh, I have a, the Taste of Torah. I use that all the time. It's the, it's a little quick devotional from First Fruits of Zion. Um, if you- Just yeah. got mine. Good. Yeah. I use that one all the time. Uh, a lot of people love this, especially if you're new. It's a really quick recap. I have a lot of women who are like, I, I don't have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done this before. It's a really great place to start. And if you're just starting, you're just starting in uh, Torah studies, that's a really great, just a quick little book. If you're not, you don't want to get overwhelmed and you just want to sit yeah. in that. And then I recommend reading, just reading it, reading the Torah and then, and maybe taking one word and go, okay, I'm going to get crazy. I'm going to try to see what this word means. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to, happy to help walk you through that. Yeah. We do have that little study on, on how to use the blue letter Bible for dummies. You can um, ask for that at info at the rooted cafe with a K.com. Yep. And we'll send we'll that. We have free. that little study. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. We'll just send that to you. So you can, it, it's Brenda and I taking you through super quick through the blue letter Bible, how to use it, how to look up a word, how to look up the letters, that yeah. things. Very basic. It's not deep. Um, you can go super, super, super deep in that but we just went real basic so it's just right basic. if you want to go really deep you want to get 
get intense with this, we recommend going to Creation Gospel um, with Dr. Holisa Alwine. Um, great, especially this is a great time to start looking at workbook one. She starts, goes to the, go in the, if you go over to the summit, she did the gospel in seven days. Blow your mind. That'll give you a, that'll give you a tip right there. I love it. Right, Misty? Did you see it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have, think I have a whole notebook. The other thing is um, Grace and Torah with Keisha Gallagher. She does a beautiful job every week of the portion. She does new moons coming up. She'll talk about the new moon and the cycles and, 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 and what's happening in Grace the and world. Dot net. Is it dot net? Sorry. Yes. Dot net. Yes. No, you're there's right. Lots, it's done. There's lots of women talking about how they've gotten the guardian angel book over here saying, Oh my gosh, it, it was life changing for their identity in who they were in Yeshua mm -hmm. and the Messiah yeah. that they have. Yeah. It was a really good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. We can't, um, I always say confident woman is sexy. It's, it's confident women. You really bring a lot to your home when you're coming in in confidence, then you can bring so much life to your home. Um, but when you're, when you're, feeling beat down and you don't know who you are the more you i think deborah said this the more you know your god the more you know you yeah. and so that's what we want that's ultimately yeah. in our last two seconds here we ultimately just want you to know your god who big g who do wow. you serve yeah what has he written to you he wrote you a love letter and 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 we are we are doing this you know baby decoder ring trying to help you just get you excited that you dig in deeper and find out more to know you're not alone yes to know that you're not crazy um you don't have to have a label if you don't identify like i'm not in hebrew roots and i don't know if i'm in the Miss messianic or if i'm in you don't have to ha you don't have to fit in anywhere or you can it doesn't matter we just want you to know you're we love you and um yeah that's what i have that's all. <laughs> this is such a big poor. I mean, it's a little Parsha, but a big, it's so much. We didn't even get into eating the trees. The world. <laughs> we could blow your mind all day about trees. And what and about Lemech and killing somebody? Come on. Oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff we could talk about, but we just want you to get in the rhythm of, get in the inconvenient rhythm. <laughs> yeah. Of taking your Shabbat. And being expelled from the garden and all of that 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 means and 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 understand that this whole story is all about redemption and yes. about the love of the father for his people yeah oh how he loves us so much and and if we can just look at this story from the eyes of him bringing forth redemption there was a reason why we had to be expelled from the garden but there's also a reason why that is still inside of us and that yearning to know him, that yearning to come back to him, to yearning to come back to that place of beauty. It's still within us. It's in our DNA. It's yes. how we were created. Yes. So he, he is so good to us. So yeah, we almost got through the first verse. <laughs> Did we get through one, one? I don't even know. I don't, I find, and we didn't even talk about the shaking, the shaking Aye. that caused the separations. Yeah. It was, there's life and death, ladies. You have the you have the gift to create. You have the gift to bring life. Yes. You have the yes. gift to bring fruitfulness in others. Hope That's you felt you challenged. Are. Um, yeah. We are going to sign out for those that are on Zoom. We'll hang out with you for so you can answer your questions and chat with you for the after party. Um, so also, if you're on Facebook, watching Facebook Live, and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to be on Zoom because I don't want to be on camera. You don't have to be. You just turn mm -hmm. your camera off. Just turn your camera so, off. Eventually, we're here, probably with us. Yeah, come be on with us, and then we can chat with you after. Okay. Okay. <laughs>